three, two, one. We have ignition and liftoff of NASA's New Horizons spacecraft on a decade voyage to visit the planet Pluto and then beyond. For me, this launch in 2006 was particularly exciting. New Horizons was the first and only spacecraft we'd sent to Pluto. My favourite planet as a kid. Pluto's had a rough trot. We visited all the other planets in the 1970s and 80s, except for Pluto. Then it was kicked off the planet list because it was just too weird and different to the other planets. New Horizons finally arrived at Pluto last year. And only now has a lot of the data been analysed. And it sure is a weird world, but it's also stunningly wonderful. Seeing Pluto for the first time close up was just amazing. Things that we just never in our wildest dreams expected. I was stunned. The mission manager always said, we're going to find something wonderful. And they've certainly found some wonderful things at Pluto. And what a treat today is. I've been granted access to Tidbin Biller's control room, while the big dish communicates with New Horizons. Now, as a kid, I was obsessed with Pluto. I knew everything there was to know about it. But it turns out that wasn't that much. I've got my old school textbook here, and they're the best photos we had of Jupiter and Saturn back then. And Pluto was just a dot with an arrow. And before New Horizons, this was our best telescope view of Pluto. My pet planet still didn't look that interesting. We just thought it's just like a comet. It's just a big comet. It was going to be just a plain frozen ball of rock, but it's anything but. This is what we saw when we arrived. So we found out that there are um, very flat plains. There are big mountains. There are glaciers flowing across its surface, ancient lakes that might be there, volcanoes on its surface. So this is a real dynamic little world. The surface of Pluto is incredibly diverse. I would say that it's probably the most diverse solid surface of any object in the solar system. For a start, it has cratered areas like our moon, Craters mean the surface is very old, because most of the solar system's cratering happened billions of years ago, just after its birth, when all the new worlds were still being bombarded by tons and tons of space debris. But unexpectedly, Pluto also has parts that are crater-free, like the now famous heart-shaped region called Sputnik Planum. This area must be very young. Sputnik Planum is less than 10 million years old. Now, 10 million years sounds like a lot, but that's a blink of an eye in geological timescale. So that heart-shaped feature on Pluto is a giant nitrogen glacier effectively flowing across the surface, and it shows signs of flow into valleys just the same way as glaciers move here on Earth. Yes, a nitrogen glacier. The nitrogen we're breathing um, on Pluto is a solid. It freezes because it's so chilly there. The temperatures we're looking at at Pluto are something in the order of about minus 238 degrees Celsius, so really cold. So cold, carbon monoxide. Car exhaust is also solid ice on Pluto, as is ammonia, and this world gets even more exotic. There's one more thing I want to mention because it's just stunning is that we found dried up lakes on Pluto. That's just the one thing I would not have expected. I mean, it's almost like a cartoon, it's so surreal. But yet, there they are, there are dried up lakes on Pluto. But probably not water lakes. Under the right conditions, liquid nitrogen, the stuff we freeze samples in, could have flowed on Pluto, creating giant pools little areas where nitrogen has flowed into valley regions and filled them up, creating these sort of mountaintop lakes. One possibility is even a, a lake of natural gas. That gas we cook our food with could be a liquid or a solid in the Pluto environment. 
and the little world gets even more enchanting. The heart-shaped region is surrounded by mountains. And these are not rock mountains. These are water ice mountains, three, four, five kilometers high. They're, as far as I can tell, they're the biggest ice cubes in the solar system. I mean, these literally are ice cubes. And Pluto could have a vast underground ocean of water. So there probably is a liquid water region under, underneath the surface of Pluto that could have a volume even larger than the volume of water on Earth. On Earth, volcanoes are created by hot, pressurised magma breaking up through the surface. On Pluto, it's water spurting up, then freezing to make ice volcanoes. Ice volcanoes, lakes of natural gas. Schoolboy Graham certainly wouldn't have been disappointed. Indeed, Pluto's remarkable features are so different to the other bodies in the outer solar system, which are giant gaseous worlds, it is difficult to categorise Pluto as a regular planet. And now, the moment I've been waiting for. Tidbin Bella is NASA's tracking station in Australia. It communicates with most of the spacecraft that are out there. Hey, Glenn, how are you? See you. I'm very excited. Yes, we so communicate with New Horizons. Yes, we're tracking New Horizons right now on our 70 metre antenna, and I thought I'd show you the signal that's coming in right at this very moment. So ah. here it is. OK, so that, that's like background noise. That's the signal. Yeah, so this is all the noise just from the universe around us, yeah. and this is the strong peak here for the signal from the New Horizons spacecraft. I, I say strong, but that signal is billions of times weaker than the power of a watch battery when we receive it. OK, maybe it's just a line to you. But to me, that's a signal from a craft at the far edge of the solar system. Extraordinary. And New Horizons is still downloading data and surprises from Pluto. Pluto's atmosphere, I mean, to me, was the, the biggest surprise of all. Through telescopes, the atmosphere seemed pretty boring. But when we got there, we see this huge extended haze layer around the planet. That is just brilliant. On Earth, that thin blue layer of atmosphere stretches up only about 100 kilometres. But on tiny Pluto, it's vast. What was interesting to discover is Pluto is only about 2,000 kilometres, its diameter, and its atmosphere can range up to 1,600 kilometres. And embedded inside of that haze region are layers, but there are at least 20 of these different layers. And again, we don't have a clue as to what produced them. There's nothing else like that in the solar system. But I think one of the most beautiful things is that the sun rises and sunsets because of the nitrogen in the atmosphere, the sky would be blue, just the same as we have here on Earth. So you'd feel right at home, but just very cold. We wouldn't feel completely at home, though. Pluto has five moons, and they have very unusual orbits. Some of them are just completely whack. They're just spinning on their side very, very fast. Imagine setting foot on one of these worlds. It'd be quite odd living there because you would never have the sun rising or setting in the same place at any time. You'd be spinning around in these quite wild orbits, only taking a few hours. One of the things that we, we've learned from the mission is that all of these moons form together when there was a large impact of another object with Pluto. Now we know so much more about Pluto and its extraordinary features. Should it be reinstated as a planet? Or are we happy to leave it as one of the many thousands of dwarf planets in the outer solar system? Personally, I don't think that matters. I, I think Pluto's status is actually now more important. It is the, the king of the dwarf planets, as it were. Some people think it's demoted. Well, I think it's kind of promoted because it, it got its own class that it deserves. Although some believe we've been too hasty demoting Pluto, things have become more complicated in the last few years since we've discovered a whole host of new, weird and wonderful worlds orbiting other stars. How do you define what a planet is. I don't think we have a good answer to that question yet. And until we do, it's going to be hard to, to say whether or not technically, officially, scientifically, that Pluto is a planet. 
I think that just for historical reasons, Pluto should be grandfathered into the list of planets. Now, Pluto wasn't New Horizons' final destination. It's still barreling out through the deepest, darkest parts of the solar system on its way to another world. January 1, 2019, the craft will visit a dwarf planet called MU69. Like for Pluto when I was a kid, it's currently just a fuzzy dot through our telescopes. Can't wait to see what treasures it has.